Yeah, hi, Ban Prakash. Yes, sir. Shall we get start? Yes. Sir. Okay. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Banu Prakash, having two years of IT experience with Mills of Development and Enhancement Project. I have started my journey with Mount Point Technologies as a Mills of Developer and currently working on the same. Uh, I have completed certifications Mills of Developer Level 1. I have good experience in working with SDLC, model like requirements gathering, analysis, design, development, mm -hmm. testing, deployment phases, worked on RAML API specification documents using API designer, uh, examples, trites, data types, libraries. I have experience in using SQL, like uh, writing SQL queries and joints. I have experience in using MUnit test, like creating test cases with auto record options. Okay. I have experience in working with any point platform, like a runtime, runtime manager exchange and access management. Mm -hmm. I have experience in data view transmissions, like from transforming from one format to another format of the given payloads. Mm -hmm. Hands-on experience with the development of REST APIs and database connectors like um, MS SQL, Salesforce, Snowflake. Uh, I have experience with Anypoint Studio and uh, different routers and error handling concept. This is pretty much about myself and experience. Okay. Uh, what is your current project? Uh, my current project is self-service banking project. Uh, client is uh, Santander Bank, uh, UK. Mm -hmm. uh, and the technologies use at any point platform. Mm -hmm. That's not technologies, tools. Tools use at any point platform, Studio, Git, uh, Azure DevOps, and Cloud Hub. So, so what the is the architecture of, I mean, so how the architecture will be your project? Architecture means flows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So how the flow it will come like? So what is the target system and uh, what uh, is the source system? Source system is... Uh, uh, web service user okay. interface mm -hmm. and a target is microsoft sql okay so here you are using uh, you have created apis so web, ah, web, APIs. Applica web application is your uh, source system correct yes yes sir. Okay. okay the data will come from web applications web and you are going to take the data and you are transforming it and you are storing it to ms microsoft yes okay good okay then tell me what is MuleSoft? Uh, MuleSoft is an integration platform. Mm -hmm. It can enable to easy integrations between different uh, uh, different applications and the service, services. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a main tool, uh, one and technology like AnyPoint platform and AnyPoint Studio. Mm -hmm. With this, we, we can build APIs and deploy into Cloud Hub easily. Okay. What are the components it is available in any point platform? And uh... components, yes. components, runtime manager, any point exchange, access mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. like that. And that's it. Only two design center. Design center. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So, what is the difference between REST and SOAP? Uh, REST is representational state transfer. These are both APIs. So is simple object access protocol. Uh, REST works on any language like JSON, XML, RS. The SOAP works on only one XML format. Mm -hmm. uh, REST can uh, works on HTTPS and HTTP protocols. Uh, one, um, SOAP is works on only XML, uh, WSDL language. Okay. Okay. Uh, first, we'll start with the RAML. Yes. So, you have been involved into design also, right? Yes, RAML. Okay. RAML. Okay. What is the difference between traits and fragments? Uh, traits and frogs are both are used in the reusable compounds. Mm -hmm. Traits is a part of a API specification. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like whatever we uh, reusable components like uh, examples and error codes uh, keep it into uh, another file and using within the api that is called rights and 
fragments is also a part of api specification this is also same like that uh, error codes we can keep it into uh, file and uh, publish into any point exchange we can use one or more apis that's a fragments correct okay uh, okay there is one scenario okay there is one scenario like yes. we are passing four query parameters to your api you can assume four query. Yes, name, yes. email address and okay. phone number okay yes yes suppose the end user i mean yes. so we have developed already that api and the end user is going to pass not only four parameters okay 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 they are going to pass 10 or 15 but that is not required at all yes so how do you avoid in this scenario so how do you achieve this scenario like we should not accept unnecessary properties so is there any flag or so how do you handle uh, in the development phase okay yeah yeah in design only so in design you have you have given only name email address and phone number yeah, right so can... these are the query parameters but i am oh, passing i'm, I'm yeah. passing 10 parameters so instead of four parameters i'm passing 10 parameters but the rest of the six parameters you should not accept then you have to say like okay throw some error yes, have you done that scenario earlier no, okay okay no problem you, you can try once okay, okay. you can try once mm. okay what is library in ramon library is a Way, way library is a part of design center mm -hmm. which, keep, which can when uh, we can keep folders and files into library and uh, keep it organized way sir okay so what is the ramel uh, current version which you are using ramel 1.0 1.0 okay good okay let's enter into any point studio concepts okay so what is the difference between for each and parallel for each. Mm. For each process the records into one by one in sequential order. Parallel for each process the records in, in parallel mode. For each is uh, is like a if else condition. If not if else for loop in programming. Mm. Uh, in for each there is a 50 records. Any record failed at uh, 20 or 30 position. The remaining records does not execute that now is executed in parallel for each except that failure record. All the records are processed successfully. Okay. So what is the difference between flow and subflow? Um, flow has a event source and a processing strategy, mm -hmm. and subflow is a part of the main flow. Main flow the subflow does not have source and uh, separate error strategy concept the we can call subflow by using um, flow reference components within the main flow okay now how many ways we can call the flows in meals of uh, you, you, you can, told the flow reference right okay is there any different ways yeah okay. uh, and flow reference and uh, we can keep into a URA parameter um, mm -hmm. and enter the flow reference so that uh, whatever we enter the yeah that's fine see, that, that yeah that is that is one option see okay. I have I have two flows one is main flow yes. and subflow okay you told like by using flow reference we can call subflow right yes so is there any yes. different ways I mean is there any different connectors are available to call one flow to another flow. That's what I'm asking. Connectors. Yeah, connectors or something. Is there any other options? Yeah. No okay. We have VM connector. So by using VM connector also, we can yes. call from one flow to another flow. Okay. And we have a data wave code. So by using data wave also, we can call from one flow to another flow. Okay. You can okay. go through this okay. one. Yes. Okay. What are the different uh, DB connectors which you worked? 
db different db connectors like uh, microsoft spl oracle spl mm -hmm. uh, snowflake salesforce okay you are you are uh, you are telling like uh, mysql right okay in mysql yeah. okay what are the different uh, connector it is available connectors uh, mm -hmm. uh, select to update mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. delete to bulk insert to mm -hmm. bulk update to okay bulk delete like that okay why do you use bulk insert uh, bulk insert uh, if you want to insert um, uh, large large payloads like okay uh, 1000 records 10000 records at a time single okay. time mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay what is synchronous flow and asynchronous flow um, synchronous flow executes in step by step order mm -hmm. asynchronous flow does not wait for the previous flow it executes in the random way okay so have you worked on batch processing yes okay so explain batch process um, batch process how it is going to work batch, yep. batch process is used um, if we have millions of records if you want to in a file or database if you want to process the records into one system into another system that way using batch processing mm -hmm. batch processing is mainly has three phases uh, okay load on pro process and on complete okay. in the load the records are loaded into memory and uh, and changed to process stage in the process stage the records are processed by using batch step and aggregator mm -hmm. so in the on complete phase Mm, it will it will show the results like how the how many records are processed how many success scenarios like that okay okay good so what are the different types of error handling it is available in mule error ha handling on yes. error country on error property yeah different types i'm asking what types, are the different types here like, uh, global level handling mm -hmm. process level Mm -hmm. Project levels. Okay. What is runtime manager? Uh, runtime manager is a component in any point platform. Mm -hmm. By using this, we can deploy and undeploy the integration app, APIs. Okay. What is horizontal scaling and vertical scaling? Mm -hmm. Vertical scaling is used to increase the uh, worker size. Hmm. Horizontal scaling is used to increase the number of workers. Okay. Suppose I want to apply security for an API. Yes. So what okay. are the steps you are going to follow? Uh, steps. So yeah. once we check the app is deployed in runtime manager or not, Mm -hmm. So if deployed successfully, go to API manager and add new API specification. Mm -hmm. Take that instance ID and go to any point studio project, uh, global elements, add okay. API auto discovery okay. and uh, save it. And then go to any point platform and take act, go to access management, take client ID and secret ID. Mm -hmm. Go to project palm.xml and uh, upside of cloud hub deployment section we add that configurations and save it once it's saved okay you can uh, apply run into okay. and push your code into azure devops and run and go to api manager once the status is active we can apply the policies okay That's fine. Okay. What are the security policies which you work? Uh, basic authentication and uh, rate limiting policies. Okay. What is rate limiting policy? Uh, rate limiting policy is uh, so within the period of time we can we can limit number of requests to allow the API. So for example, within one minute we can set uh, 20, 20 requests. So once the limit exceeded. So it give error four to nine too many requests. Okay. So have you worked on uh, object store? 
yes sir. yeah what are the components it is available in object store uh, object store uh, object store retrieve object store clear object store store mm -hmm. retrieve all retrieve retrieve all please mm -hmm. uh, object store clear okay okay there is a scenario uh, you can assume okay there is a scenario i have one file okay i have one file it contains 1 million records yes. i want to insert into ms sql okay yes there are many ways but what is your approach and what is your design how you are going to design this application uh, okay what are the components you will use and uh, it's from uh, scratch step by step i need yeah what are the steps you will follow file file right as yes there is a file not database so we can set on new or modified our file okay drag that and uh, keep loggers for understanding mm -hmm. and drag the batch step batch okay. step job okay and within that we can select database insert mm -hmm. so uh, we can set aggregate size like 1000 or 10000 okay. mm -hmm. like that's yeah it's a partially correct but you have to explain okay so are you going to read uh, that entire 1 million records at the same time or you are going to split it into multiple files so that kind of design either you are going to use single insert or bulk insert yes okay that's fine uh, there is another scenario like okay um, i'm going to insert the data okay mm -hmm. i am going to insert the data into two databases okay, okay. first like ms sql and another one is rkl okay. so first database the insertion is successful okay the insertion is successful yes. and the second database it is failing sometimes so not all the times sometimes mm -hmm. it is failing okay so whenever the data is going to fail in second database i want to remove the records from first database also so how okay. we are going to do this you understand my question right yes. there are two databases yes one yes. is ms sql and rkl so first okay. database you are you are able to insert the record successfully and second database it's failing due to some reason okay so in that case you need to remove the records from first database also so how do you handle have you heard about rollback in sql rollback yeah so whenever no. if the row is not successful then we need to use rollback to remove the previous transaction also okay you okay. can practice okay. this this kind of scenarios okay fine yes okay let's enter into data wave so what is data wave mainly uh, data is a functional programming language Mm -hmm. we, by using this we can transform one for uh, one format to another format like json to xml json mm -hmm. to csv okay uh can you tell me which uh, you have worked on uh, some functions in data wave so what are the functions you, which you are aware and uh, you have worked some functions map okay map map object to mm -hmm. filter mm -hmm. join 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 by group by okay if it fails like that yeah that's fine so do you have any questions mm, this is very data database function 